Hey everyone, so I just wanted to film a video, um, honestly just to speak my mind, and I wrote down a lot of stuff, so I'm honestly just going to be reading. I know that sometimes it's kind of annoying if you just like see me reading something, and I could have maybe made this a podcast, but my biggest platform is YouTube, so I wanted to do this on YouTube, maybe I'll put it in a podcast too, I don't really know. Um, but I really think that it's important for me to say, and I'm just going to get started and just start reading. Um, yeah, because I don't know what to say. I'm really nervous. Basically, just going to talk about some of my thoughts and yeah. Okay. Anyways, let's get started. I'm sitting down as a non-black woman talking about what has been going on these past few weeks when really we all know it's been going on for years. I don't want to silence black people's voices, so I debated filming this if it wasn't my place, but I feel like now more than ever... We all need to come together to stand for what is right. I do not know the struggles black people face on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't know what it's like to encounter racism. I grew up in a pretty sheltered bubble with a Hispanic mom and a white dad, and I have had the privilege of never being looked down upon because of the color of my skin. What has gone on this week is not new to the black community. It is not something that started with George Floyd, it didn't start with Ahmaud Arbery, it did not start with Breonna Taylor. These injustices have been around for much, much longer. And while I am glad many people are waking up to these injustices, I hope your activism stays around longer than your 24-hour Instagram story or your Instagram post. My parents are both immigrants who came to the United States at 18 years old. My dad escaped a communist country and my mom came here from Honduras in order to obtain a college education. I always used to think that because of that, I was more informed of the world than my friends who didn't have immigrant parents. The American dream came true for my parents. They came here with nothing and built a life for themselves and for us so we could grow up privileged. I never had to worry about money, I never worried about paying for college, and I never worried about having to work multiple jobs and to study. I lived incredibly comfortably. I also grew up not really thinking racism was a real American issue. I didn't think this country had systemic racism. Especially because my parents, who were considered underprivileged and minorities, made it out fine, then everyone else can too. I went to a school that was ranked the best school in North Carolina since they would never let us forget it, and we were a majority white public high school. I don't think this excuses any ignorance, I really want to say that, but I think it's important to note the way that many people, including myself, have grown up. I didn't grow up with police all over my neighborhood. I didn't grow up with drug dogs every single week, even though nearly every person at my high school had smoked weed, done molly on prom night, done a lot of drugs at raves, threw house parties whenever parents were out of town. I am not ashamed of my privilege or my skin color. I don't think that that's the point. The point is not to be ashamed that you are white or that you are not black. But we need to recognize it and realize that not every person is treated fairly. Not every person receives the same treatment. Just because you don't see racism or you don't see people being treated unfairly or you have a few black friends or you haven't experienced the discrimination and racism used on black people doesn't mean that it's not happening. I want to share some resources, statistics, and facts that I learned over the years to unlearn a lot of things I have read a lot of books written by black people. When people say that diversity is important, it is because it is. In order to learn about other experiences, you need to listen to them. Again, just because you don't experience something doesn't mean that it is not happening. Some of the books that have opened my eyes um, are Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. Brian Stevenson is one of my favorite people. This book is more than just a story about a lawyer who works pro bono. This is a story about the criminal justice system. This is about how our government and law sets minorities, mainly black people, and a poor underprivileged people in a system where they will never succeed. It is a heartbreaking book and it is very eye-opening. There is also a movie, um, they're actually streaming it for free right now if you guys want to check it out. I do recommend the book, I think the movie was incredible but the book just goes into way more detail so definitely recommend the movie um, or the book as well. The Sun Does Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton. He is a man who spent 30 years on death row for a crime that he didn't commit. 30? For 30 years guys, just like let that sink in, 30 years. It is his story in his own words. He never got to be married. He never got to have children. He, the criminal justice system wiped out an entire generation because of the color of his skin. I love this book because I have never read a book about a man with so much faith. Spend 30 years being abused by a system who was meant to protect you for something that you never did and still have faith is hard to believe. I mourn whenever I think of how many more Mr. Hintons there are in our prisons. 
The other book is called The Awakening of a White Nationalist, Rising Out of Hatred. This one is not written by a black man, but it's a former KKK member who has spent his years unlearning about what his family has taught him. I think it can be important to see why people believe what they do and how they unlearn these thoughts. It can help others in similar situations and if you share any of those same beliefs this book can really explain how harmful those beliefs can be. Another book is called Amazing Grace. It's another story written by a white man but he is a journalist in the Bronx and interviews children growing up in the 90s in the Bronx. You see how ignored they are, how the education they have is so poor, and why so many continue in the cycle of drugs and jail. If you don't think that you are privileged, please read this book and compare your childhood to the childhood of these children being raised in the Bronx. And then the last book that I do recommend, but there's probably so many others out there that I've been seeing all over social media, is The New Jim Crow. If you think max incarceration is just locking up criminals, please, please, please read this book. It's so eye-opening. This book covers what is in the documentary 13th on Netflix, which I also highly recommend. It's an hour and 40 minutes and it is one of the most eye-opening documentaries, um, but the book does, do, does explain things in a more detailed way, something that an hour and a half just cannot fill, so I highly recommend reading this book along with the documentary. It is infuriating and heartbreaking, but it is necessary. And if reading isn't for you, here are some key takeaways and rebuttals to many arguments that I have had and heard and that can have a positive impact and shape our future. So one of the ones that I've heard a lot is we had a black president. President Obama was elected. In 1960, 60% of people said that they would not vote for a black president. And now, basically 50 years later, Obama was elected. So here are my thoughts on that. Many of those 60% of people who voted that they would never vote for a black president probably passed that down to their children, which is our parents' generation today. However, that is not fair to say since many people break that cycle of ignorance. I just want to note that 1960 was not that long ago and that is, those are like your grandparents' age, so that generation is still around today. Saying that we don't have racism because of Obama is like saying that you aren't racist because you have a black friend, which I think we can all agree that that's not true. Also, I'm not saying that the majority of people in this country are considered racist, but there is a lot of racial indifference, which is detrimental. So it's in systems of power today that targets black people more than white people, and that is what is harmful when we people do not speak up and just let it happen. Okay, next rebuttal, next argument. In 1967, 16 states made it illegal to interracially marry. In 1958, only 4% of people approved of interracial marriage. Again, this is very recent. These like dates are so recent. Um, these are our grandparents and parents that are raised on these beliefs. This is progress. Yes, I'm not denying that we have not progressed as a nation. We have. But that doesn't mean we have gotten rid of racism in this country. I was actually watching a friend's video on IGTV and she said that she has never experienced more racism in her life than when she is seen with her white boyfriend and she is a black woman. Next argument. Police have killed twice as many whites as they did blacks. So black people are only 13% of the population so if they've killed twice as many whites, that's still incredibly disproportionate of the population. People like to argue that black people kill way more black people than white people killing black people, just like most white homicides are against other white people. Okay, so we aren't arguing for any murder. We're not sitting here arguing murder. Murder is wrong and everyone knows that. Murder is wrong. People have a million reasons for it and murder is never okay. But a black person killing a black person or a white person killing a white person is not due to the color of their skin. It can be because of an altercation, revenge, gang related activity, mental illness. People typically kill within their own communities, not outside of it. We are talking about a system here, not a random crime. Next argument is that many people who are stopped for traffic violations did commit a traffic violation. And I think this is important because a lot of altercations that you see between white cops and black police officers kind of start at traffic violations or there's statistics that black people are more likely to be stopped for a traffic violation than white people and it's i'm not saying that it's not because they committed a traffic violation many police use traffic violations to meet their quota so that the federal grant money is well spent it is easy to pull someone over for a simple traffic violation in hopes of finding something else Anyone driving more than a few blocks is likely to commit a traffic violation of some kind, failing to track properly between lanes, failing to stop at precisely the right distance behind a crosswalk, failing to pause precisely the right amount of time at a stop sign, failing to use a turn signal at the appropriate distance from an intersection, speeding. In Florida, this is a direct quote from um, the book that I'm reading, The New Jim Crow Laws. 
In Florida, reporters reviewed nearly 1,000 videotapes of highway traffic stops and found that police had used traffic violations as an excuse or pretext to confiscate tens of thousands of dollars from motorists against whom there was no evidence of wrongdoing, frequently taking the money without filing any criminal charges. This has happened many times before. I really, really encourage you guys to read about these cases. The next argument is that black people commit more crimes. Especially with drugs, white and black people are actually found to both use the same amount of drugs or use drugs the same. They're more, they're equally likely to use drugs. However, there was a spike from the 70s to today in black men in prison over crimes like possession of marijuana for extremely longer sentences. Think about this. Are black people committing more crimes or are police profiling them more? Also, when mass incarceration began, many, many more black men went to prison for petty things, things that they didn't even do and had extremely long sentences. This breaks up the family cycle and your kids are more likely to repeat in similar patterns of not having a parental figure at home, distrust in law enforcement for good reason, and poverty. So when we have mass incarceration, it leads to a lot of other problems, especially when black people are being targeted more and are more likely to get arrested than a white person. Next argument, black people shouldn't have special treatment. You're right, they just want to be treated fairly and equally. And ask yourself this, I saw this video going around, if would you want to be treated like black people are today? Like, would you be okay with the way black people are treated today? There's some questions that I saw also. So for one was, do you ever think twice about taking the receipt after you bought something because you want to have proof that you didn't steal something? Do you ever think twice as to why the store clerk is following you around in the store because you look suspicious? This has happened to so many black people and I really encourage you to listen to their stories. Another thing that I wanted to note is that if you are getting all your information from the news or from one black spokesperson, I recommend talking to your black friends and genuinely asking them how they are doing. And if you don't have any black friends, then this is really a huge reason of why it is so important to surround yourself with diverse people. You do not get to tell others about their own experiences. You cannot say that their own experiences aren't real or aren't happening. You don't know and you will never know what it's like. So, but what you can do is talk to them, listen to them and empathize with them. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that, that my beliefs stem from my faith. My belief in Jesus and who he is. I believe Jesus opposed the taking of life and of racism and he, that he seeked justice. And I do believe that all Christians will say that racism is bad. That statement in itself, I think we're all on board. Racism is bad. No one is arguing that racism is good, but the arguments happen when you are not seeing the injustices that are happening or you are ignoring them or you are sitting and not doing anything about them. God is a loving God more than anything, but he is also just. There is so much in the Bible that points to that. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Psalm 89, 14. Jesus pursued justice, physically and spiritually rescuing people. Physically, meaning that he took action. He spoke up. Give justice to the weak and fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Psalm 82, 3. Learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, and please the widow's cause. Isaiah 1, 17. But woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb, but you neglect justice and the love of God. Those you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Luke eleven fourteen. Do you see a common pattern? We are told to care for the least of these and to seek justice and correct oppression. These are action words. We cannot sit still or sit back and do nothing. So I am using my voice. I am standing up for what is right. I am seeking justice. All that I can promise is that I will try to speak up when I see injustice happening. I will try to correct the oppression. That is not a new battle, but I am finally taking a public stand. I truly believe that I was given this platform for a reason. I'm glad I have today to speak on this. I am not saying that every single police officer is bad. I am not anti all cops. I am saying that this is a systemic issue. People aren't being held accountable. A reform within our justice system and policing structure needs to happen for change to happen. I will anger and disappoint people in my life, including some members of my family, but I can no longer stand silent. That to me is the hardest thing because there can be people that you love in your life that you disagree with. And it is important to have these conversations and you should have these conversations and you shouldn't insult each other if they don't agree with you. It's just a lot of these things I have learned over the past years. I, w I was not always 
defending what I'm defending right now. And I think it's probably been the past six, five, six years that I've really been passionate about something like this, but I've just never publicly said it because I'm so scared of disappointing people in my life. And I will disappoint people in my life. Even people who disagree with me, I still love them so much. But I am scared to talk about this. I just feel like I am going against my faith if I do not say something and I need to say something about this. I just want to encourage people if they are in the same position where they are scared to say something because of their family. Like, I'm not scared because of social media. Like, I don't care about that. It's, I'm scared because of people in my own personal life and I'm not saying names, I'm not saying who. Um, just if you are in that same situation where there are certain people in your family that you can't have these conversations with or you're scared to have these conversations or you don't feel valid in your arguments or you feel like you are don't know enough or you're not educated enough or whatever that is i'm making this video so that i can help you understand that you're not alone that these conversations are so important to be had i just think it's so important to be educated and to educate yourself and to do everything with love especially as a christian i just feel like that is where this stems from for me of where i can't be silent anymore and yeah so i'm sorry that i was reading off of something the whole time i just really wanted to just write it all down and it was just the easiest way instead of having me keep looking back up and looking back down and it was just like i'm just like i'm just gonna read it and pour my heart out to you guys um that was a really today i mean this week has just been so heavy on so many people i can't even imagine what it's like for people of color but check in on your black friends check in on how they're doing listen to their experiences you aren't black so you won't know but listen like just ask them just ask them a question don't look to a t person a tv host or a tv anchor someone with a show to be the representative for all black people like talk to your own friends and yes your one friend is not a representative of all black people either but it starts when you just have a genuine conversation with them and you speak to them and it's not speaking to them as like hey what should i read what should i do it's just speaking to them to hear about their experiences and that's it so take the time to educate yourself you might disagree with me and i can't do anything about that but i think these conversations are important and yeah okay i'm gonna list some resources in the description box so that you guys can actually take action as well because i know everyone has something that they can do people can donate people can speak up people can protest i am lucky to have a platform I'm so incredibly blessed to have a platform of 270,000 subscribers that I can speak about this with. So I think it would be wrong of me if I didn't um, because I'm. this is injustice happening before our eyes. And I hope that this helped anyone. But yeah, okay. Um, if you want to talk in my DMs, my DMs are always open.